Welcome to Gate Crashers, a podcast dedicated to kicking open the door to your next favorite thing. Our mission, our creed, and our code is this, to make all things more approachable and accessible for everyone. We want you to find a universe that you'll fall in love with. Today, I'm joined by two-time Eisner and GLAD-nominated inker and penciler of the series, crowded and writer artists of Think of Me from this year's DC Pride special, Ted Brandt and Rose Stein. How are you? Very well, thank you. Yeah, pretty good. Very glad to be here. Yes. I'm very excited to chat with you. Um, I'm Dan, my pronouns are he, him. I meant to put that at the beginning. So I don't know how familiar you are with us as a site or me as a journalist, but I always like to open all of my interviews with some heavy hitting journalism. So I hope you're ready. (laughs) (laughs) What's your favorite sandwich? Oh, Um, right. Okay. I can do this one. Um, You always talk about that one from the Carnegie Deli. Yeah, I mean, the, the favourite sandwich I've ever had was a Carnegie Deli one, but the, my favourite kind of just everyday sandwich would probably be ham, cheese, lettuce, mayo, and enough jalapenos to make you regret a few things in life. I know that feeling. I can't pick a favourite because it always depends on what I'm feeling like in the at the day. I like crappy supermarket ham and <laughs> butter. Just that. <laughs> Ham and butter? Very simple. Nice. No, just but- ham and butter. Huh. All right. So I like bread with uh, butter and salt on it. I'm, I'm very I, basic. I feel that. I've been going through like a toast phase where I'm like, oh, I just fucking love toast. Yeah. And there's no rhyme or reason for it. It's just, it's just the plain and simple beauty. Now, your pride story this year is about Connor Hawk, who is the son of Green Arrow for a very long time fans have thought this character was asexual, but now you're finally getting to truly express that on the page. How does that feel as a creative team? Kind of crazy. Yeah. Like um, when Andrea um, Shea, the uh, editor we're working with got in touch with us, it was, yeah, it was quite surprising. It took a little while for it to sink in because yeah, it's a really big deal. And Mostly, we've just been really nervous the whole way through, <laughs> making sure that yeah, we could do the best job we uh, that we could because it's a big moment for him. Yeah. So you we'll were do it right by our boy. Exactly. <laughs> you were approached with this character. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Now, <clears throat> is this story? Is this more of a story of coming out, or is is something he's already established in himself, and it's just him opening up about it? Um, it's, it's absolutely a coming out story, um, without being able to go into mm. specifics for obvious reasons, then it's not, a, like, it's confessional, but also not, um, not just conversation or anything like that. It, it, it's hard to describe, but it makes a lot more sense, especially for Connor's context, um, when when you read it, how without any spoilers or anything like that, how did you approach a coming out story? Like, was there any elements you wanted to be sure t- to kind of visualize and get on the page? Not visualize, no, because I mean, what we've got really is um, the narration is entirely juxtaposing the art. Interesting. So it. So no, I mean, well, so the visuals aren't really to do with the coming out necessarily. Mm-hmm. No, no, I mean, the, there is a there is definitely a juxtaposition between the art and the and the text, so that it feels very thematically appropriate for everything that he's saying when he's saying it. But it's not directly related to the you know the images yeah. on the page. Were there any elements that you wanted to bring to the story? as like written about being asexual and what that means to readers who may not fully be versed in that. That's basically a lot of the, the um, text. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's as much a primer on asexuality as at least as, as much of one as you can do in eight pages as it is a coming out. 
it's an explanation of what it feels what it feels like to be asexual. So we're not saying that's necessarily a universal. Oh no, mm-hmm. but it's um, drawing on personal experience. Yes. Yeah. Now, coming from your Eisner and Glad nominated indie book, Crowded, which if listeners have not read yet, make sure you pick it up. Was writing this story in like the big DCU different from that? Was it? Did you approach writing this story differently than you would work on something um, creator owned? I mean, we haven't actually written anything creator owned yet. Uh, it's very much on our to do list, but. Um. I don't know if we would necessarily have approached it differently. If any any kind of story like this has to be done with a certain amount of responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. So the only difference might be was like, this is probably going to have a much, well, it will have a much bigger reach than if we had done something creator owned in the same vein. But um, I think we would have t- tried to tackle it with the same sensitivity and personal experience as we would with this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, I mean, it's comics. It's all like it's always a team sport. So we were lucky in the sense that the um, the team was smaller this time around because it was just us and our letterer Frank, um, who did a truly fantastic job. So um, we didn't have to we didn't have to uh, write anything um, worrying about the visuals because we knew we were going to be able to take care of it. Mm-hmm. Now, working, you're writing and doing the art as a duo. Do you find that helps you stay closer to your ideas? I, I know comic, comics are a team sport, but being that you're doing most of the lifting, then um, lettering is done by Frank. Did you find that was easier? Having a smaller team? Different. I don't know about easier. Yeah. So I mean, there's still, there's, there's challenges, regardless of how many people are involved. There wasn't difficulty with any communication stuff. Then there's all like the case of like, well, we have to do this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yes, we didn't have to communicate to as many people what was going on, but then we also had a lot more responsibility on our shoulders. So it's just a very different set of mm-hmm. difficulties and and rewards. Now we have gotten to see who the the villain is of this story, and <laughs> you brought in the music meister who. I'm beyond thankful that now it's canon. Um, what made you want to bring this character to the page? We just love him. <laughs> yeah, that 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 was it. <laughs> we like his deal. Uh, Is and we like he, a good dose of cheese. Yeah, exactly. Like we both adore Batman: The Brave and the Bold, and then it, it was one of those wonderful bits of serendipity because originally. We've been tossing out ideas like, you know, more traditional arrow-based villains like Merlin or whatever, and we just we just thought, no, we, like if we if we're getting to write this, we want to swing for the fences, try and pull in something we really want, and it turned out to be really serendipitous because then actually, Music Meister becomes quite central to the metaphor we use to explain asexuality. Interesting. Now, I I have I read the other interview you did about this book um, about the earplugs. What earplugs? Ear what? Whatever yeah, goes in the ear to block out sound. Um, yeah. What, what was the choice to use that? Was that something to strengthen the metaphor you were going for? That was actually a practicality to be fighting music meister, and then it worked really well for the metaphor. <laughs> Yeah, because it was that thing of like we we only have eight pages, so we couldn't we we couldn't allow Music Meister to have his full effects because that would you know fighting that off and all of that it would take too long. So we needed something quick and dirty that would mean that you know that wouldn't be so much of a thing. Kind of goes in prepared and <laughs> exactly. So yeah. You know, it... It's just one of those things of everything worked out perfectly because then, especially like when we had um, when we had the addition of Damian Wayne into um, the last page just to help tie it into current continuity, then that actually became a really good explainer for where Connor would get such high tech from. 
so it all worked out really well. With with Damien being only on one page, <clears throat> is this someone that Connor feels safe talking to? Like, is Damien just someone that like people open up to? He's very supportive in a really grumpy way. <laughs> It's a really good way to describe it. <laughs> yeah, he, he may not be. I mean, Damien Wayne, I think his vibe is he's the epitome of kind, not nice. That That is maybe the best descriptor I've ever heard of him. Huh. Yeah. I'm huge Damien fan. So like that, um, that tracks actually. Yeah. With, before I ask a little bit more about Connor, um, the music meister, you don't have to split up if you want to. Is he going to have multiple costumes or is it just one being that it's only eight pages? Only one, just unfortunately. One. <laughs> that's fine. But it's a good one. It's a good one. With, yeah. with this only being eight pages, was it harder to tell that story or did you find being concise made it a little bit easier? I don't know. I, th- um, I, think, it, I think it allowed... Like, it, I mean, the way we, we did it was like we paced out the story and wrote the monologue independently of each, like independently from each other, for each of the parts. So we kind of, you know, worked out the action and then in a separate thing entirely wrote out the monologue and then sliced it up. So it it's hard to say because it, it was always designed for this length. Mm. Interesting. As a as a way of thinking, like we could have done more with twenty pages, but honestly, probably probably not better. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm so excited to read this. Now, before you were approached about this, were you fans of Connor? I had not heard of him. <laughs> I was. <laughs> um, after after having worked with the character, what do you f- find most interesting about them? Hmm. I don't know. We, when Andrea sent us a whole bunch of back issues of him to read, and I just found it really compelling, and I can't really pinpoint why. Mm-hmm. I've always loved his mixture of grace and sense of self. It's such a perfect counterpoint to the, I, I would argue personally, brashly insecure Oliver Queen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, I've loved seeing him along with Damien because I I had never really experienced the character before Robin. And I was like, oh, I love Connor. And now getting to see people who I know have been fans for a long time feel validated in the thoughts of it and see being able to see themselves on the page is also super important. So I'm glad the story is getting to be told. Now, with queer characters taking more of a spotlight in mainstream comics, do you think the overall industry is coming to a place where there's more space for everyone? I have no idea, but I hope so. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so our big final question is, if you had a Rube Goldberg machine, what would it do? And if you don't know what a Rube Goldberg machine is, I'm happy to explain. Oh, I'm very familiar. I've Good. watched plenty of Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Back to toast. Um, <laughs> oh, that's a really tough one. Hmm. I don't really need much help getting dressed in the morning because I have a such a limited wardrobe that choosing what to put on and then putting it on is absurdly simple because I am, when it comes to clothing, just possibly the most basic person I know. So and this isn't a visual podcast, so no one's going to see this, but both of you are wearing amazing sweaters. I just wanted to, <laughs> I just wanted to note that. Thank you. I made mine. Did yeah. you really? <laughs> yeah. That's so hat. impressive. I could never. <laughs> um, I mean, I've, I always liked the Pee Wee Herman or um, Doc Brown uh, breakfast Rube Goldberg machines. So not necessarily a fan of all the ingredients that they put into their breakfast, but I think I'd go with a breakfast one. I know one that you could use, one that would actually put your books away. Oh, God, yeah. That'd be good. <laughs> you, you just have to put them in one place and it'll just put them into a location for you that is 
better than a windowsill. I mean, sure, but then you know, I also I'm not sure certain I trust all of my books to a machine that would have, by definition, be flinging them across the room and <laughs> yeah, true, <laughs> all true. Of that. So I'm I'm sticking with breakfast. Oh, put away laundry. Hmm. I like that one too. Well, auto folder. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Where can people find you? And is there anything else they should be picking up that you're putting out? Um, not currently. I mean, you've already mentioned Crowded, and mm-hmm. we would love it if people would go and buy that because not enough people have. <laughs> so uh, please get on that immediately. But other than that, um... <clears throat> uh, we did an issue. Well, we did a short in a red Sonya, um, black, white, and red. Yep. And uh, also, also, Pride Month themed look out because uh, there'll be an announcement coming in fairly soon for um, our uh, story in Marvel Voices Pride. I'm excited. I saw I saw some hints of that on your page, so I'm very excited to see everything that you do. You can find us at Gatecrashers dot fan and at gatecrashers pod on all social media i i've said this so many times you think i would be able to remember my own website by now but <laughs> it's fine <laughs> um, so yeah as far as twitter goes find me at 10 underscore bandits i am rose stein 404 i am very rarely there i'm very bad at social media <laughs> probably for the best I wish I was. I wish I was worse at it. But thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm so excited to read your story. Um, and thanks for being here. Thank, thank you, you for having, having us. us. Yeah.